All right, welcome back to another Ginger Snap Customs misadventure. So it is thawing today in Michigan, as you can see. It's being a mess, but I have a fast box behind me, so I must be up to no good. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna flip this thing around and show you what we got going on. Okay, so we've got our quick disconnect fuel tool here to remove the line off the fuel cooler. I've got my fittings here from Fast, kind of just making sure I've got all the right tools for the job. I've got a pocket full of wrenches that I put over here. So your main friends here, 22 millimeter for this, three quarter to hang onto this. There's those, these are your U-bolts. You need a 13 millimeter socket. In this case, I'm actually gonna opt for a deep well. And that way I'm adequately prepared. So that'll take care of that. And I've got a Sharpie here to mark my fuel lines once I get into the truck so I can cut these at the appropriate length. And I've got the harness kind of just balled up here for the time being. So I'm actually going to crawl into the truck, put this on the cross member. Remember, we pole goes down, not up, towards the sky. Get this mounted. I'll get the U-bolts on get it where we want it. And then I will take a video of it bolted on and explain what we're going to disconnect with this little guy. So I'm going to just crawl around. I'll be right back. Something I want to note real quick is that you need to remove the fuel cooler, 13 millimeter bolt, 13 millimeter bolt, and way up here is a 13 millimeter bolt as well. Fuel cooler's loose. So now we can read our fast instructions and see what our next step is, and then I'll continue on videoing. As you can see, it's snowed since I started working on this video. Um, there were some technical difficulties so you do not take off any of the quick disconnects for the fuel cooler. There is a line that goes on the top of the fuel tank off the sending unit. That is your suction line. In my case, that suction line was stuck and it was not going to let go anytime soon because it's been on the truck since 2001 and it was rotted in place. I actually broke my quick disconnect tool. So a little discouraged by that. But in this video, you will see that I did get the fast on the truck. The truck is behind me. And I did use the exact same pilot tools that were on the tailgate when I started video in this three or four days ago. And um, something I wanna make mention of is that this is done as a workaround because that broken, stuck, rotted, quick disconnect, basically really rained on my parade and I could not get it undone, especially for breaking tools. So I bought a small um, pipe cutter and I cut the line and then I went ahead and moved on with the installation. So I'm actually gonna crawl under the truck real quick and point out to you what quick disconnect is stuck and not probably ever gonna come undone. And I'll also kind of show you guys what's going on, where it's plumbed and uh, that'll conclude the fast part two installation on Beater Max because well, I live in the Rust Belt, and hopefully this will help some of you guys out that need to troubleshoot or get around the same issue. All right, I am currently under the truck, and this quick disconnect here is the one that's rotted in place. This is your suction line. This needs to come off to put the new fast fitting in, and unfortunately, in my case, it will not come apart. Broke tools, broke wrenches, and... It's just gonna stay there because obviously it has no interest in coming apart. So as you can see, the fuel cooler is remounted. We've got our bolt up here, our one here, and our one down here. And I'm gonna zoom out real quick and show you guys what I got going on with the fast. All right, here's the fast. Here's your 13 millimeter bolts that will hold it onto the cross member as depicted here. We pull is down as we mentioned. Here is your outlet that goes to the engine. In this case, there's a nice section right here in the frame that kicks down. So I went ahead and I bought that pipe cutter and I cut it. No, this is not the world's prettiest job, but it works. So here's your suction coming out of the fast outlet side. Up, goes to the stainless line, runs to the engine. And the bottom one is your suction drawing from the fuel tank here cut, double clamped, goes into our fuel, our inline fuel filter, 
as you can see the arrow here directional flow so it is correct this comes around and goes into the fast the reason i did the loop like that is to buy me some room and that way i can actually change this filter easier later here's our electrical plug voila for our fast runs up goes up along the frame rail as you can see it runs all the way to the front i have a zip tied in place and it runs up the abs lines to the engine bay so i'll crawl it from under the truck and then we'll talk about what the underhead hood looks like and that'll conclude it okay so here's the underhood of beater max so once you get your fast in and you get it all plugged in what you're going to want to do is actually open that fuel bleeder i went ahead and actually used the primer bulb here and primed the system before starting the engine it helps get some of the air out of the line and then what you need to do is just leave that loose for about 15 seconds while the fast runs it'll push pardon me the rest of the air out and it cleans up runs fine everything is good fuel system is good to go so i don't have the proper battery bolts to just hooked up the fast direct so what i ended up doing is i can slide this up and pull this back our power is run off the junction box here that we use for jump starting other vehicles so i put that there the ground is here where the hood ground goes our fuse our inline fuse here is with the injection system harness it runs back i have everything bundled here and it is currently zip tied together rolled up as nice as i could get it and you've got the rest of your line here like i said it runs right along the abs up around into our battery location and then this is our little fuse power guy here that we had talked about in part one that goes into ecm fuse e so let's flip this around i keep flipping it and tossing it so it goes in this guy right here that takes care of it there's your underhood like i said mine's not done quite as traditionally as i had hoped it to be because of the truck being a 2001 it's rusted it was somebody's work truck i bought it and i am currently just using it as my daily beater farm truck to keep my 8-1 out of the salt so like i said this was kind of a less than traditional installation you power out of your junction box here ground up to the where the hood ground should be in my case the hood ground is actually grounded someplace else and you can bundle up your extra wiring up under this brace zip tie it in place zip tie this in place I've got the, the access here for the main power fuse and that's all you need to do so here's your fast 7001 d-max booster installation done on a 2001 gmc sierra lb7 thanks guys